When it comes to compact cars, the Mazda 3 has long been considered among the most fun to drive on the market. No, it's not going to fool anyone into thinking it's a sport compact car, but it definitely has what it takes to inject just a little bit of excitement into the daily commute. And the brand is hoping to continue that fun to drive offensive in 2017 with the addition of G vectoring control, a system that uses a little electronic trickery as well as physics to improve cornering performance. So let's check it out. <laughs> Now before we get to the good stuff, it's important to note that this is a proper mid-cycle refresh, which means the Mazda 3 gets more than a fancy new G-vectoring control system as part of its update. It gets new front and rear fascias outside as well as some new wheel designs, but really there's not a whole lot to tell this thing apart from its predecessor. I think the last car was good looking and there was no reason to stray too far from that design, so Mazda was wise to stick to what it knows. Inside it gets a new center console design that features an electronic parking brake as well as a sport button in automatic models. It also features a redesign for the 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system, but otherwise it's the same car as it was for 2016. It looks a little bit more like the Mazda 6 inside, which I think is a good thing, but it's just a nice, clean, streamlined design that's familiar to anyone who's been in a Mazda in recent years. When it comes to operating the infotainment system, you can do it two ways. You can either use the touchscreen when the car is stationary, or this knob on the center console when it's moving. It works pretty well either way, though I will say the system itself isn't quite as refined as some of the competition, especially ones with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also just something about this system that looks and feels a little juvenile. I don't know if it's the graphics or just the way that you navigate through things, but it seems a little bit like a kid's toy and I'm just not crazy about it. I will say once Apple CarPlay and Android Auto comes around, it will be a big step in the right direction, but until it does, this is a bit of a black mark on the car's cabin. Engineers also went out of their way to reduce the amount of road noise that makes its way inside the cabin of this car, and they've done a pretty good job. They've used a whole bunch of new sound deadening materials, and it is a huge improvement over the last car. It's not the quietest on the market, but it's pretty damn close. But as great as those little changes are, they're just that, little changes. The biggest change here is the addition of G-vectoring control. Now that's a software-based system that's aimed to smooth steering inputs as well as improve cornering response to maintain that fun to drive factor that's synonymous with Mazda's cars. Now the system works by reducing engine torque ever so slightly in response to steering input, which helps transfer more of the car's weight over the front wheels. What that does is it improves turn in response and traction. When you're working your way through the corner, that torque that was put on hold is then shifted back to the rear wheels to improve corner exit. The whole thing happens pretty imperceptibly, and to be honest with you, you're not even really going to notice it working, but that's kind of the point of the whole thing. It's not meant to be this big, in-your-face sort of performance. It's just meant to improve things enough so that you know it's there, you know it's working. You just maybe don't necessarily know how. You know, most other automakers use brake-based torque vectoring systems to improve cornering response, but those tend to have a little bit more of a noticeable effect. I don't quite know how to put it, but I would say that they're just a little more direct and in your face. This one's meant to be a little bit more subtle and it definitely works. It's really smooth in and out of corners and it's just an awful lot of fun when you want it to be, but it's also good when you don't. If you're just cruising around, you're driving to work, 
it's nice to know that you can take a corner and not feel a whole lot of body roll or the car feeling like it's about to careen out of the corner if you take it just a little bit too fast. I'd say it's a pretty well executed system. But the best part of the G-Vectoring control system is it just contributes to the fun factor that Mazda's cars are known for. No, this isn't a sport compact car, but it does know how to have fun when you want it to. And that to me is a big selling feature of a car like this. You don't need a ton of horsepower to have fun and this is a prime example of that. And speaking of power, while most automakers have turned to turbocharged engines to provide that combination of horsepower and fuel efficiency, Mazda has stuck with its naturally aspirated options as part of its Sky Active suite. And you know, they're pretty good engines. This Mazda 3 is available with the choice of 2 liter or 2.5 liter four cylinders under the hood, both of which make a decent amount of power. Our tester has the larger of the two engines under the hood, which is good for 184 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque, which is plenty. Either engine can be made into the choice of manual or automatic transmissions, both of which feature six gears. Now this one has the automatic, which features paddle shifters if you want to run through the gears yourself, but for 2017 it also features this sport mode selector that's next to the gear shifter. Now what that does is it changes the mapping just a little bit to kick up throttle response, keep the engine higher in the rev range and for longer, and it makes it a little more responsive overall. When you don't want that added responsiveness, leave it in normal mode, and this thing will cruise around at pretty low revs, which means pretty good fuel economy. Underpitting the car is a multi-link suspension setup that features new dampers front and rear for 2017 that do a pretty good job of smoothing uneven pavement. But the car also maintains that stiffness and rigidity you want when you want to have a little bit of fun, and it does a nice job of communicating what's going on. Combined with a nimble steering setup that's nicely weighted, this thing's athleticism is pretty impressive and it still shows why it won Autoguide.com's Car of the Year three years ago. It's just nice and fun to play around with, but it's also just as capable as any other commuter on the market. But you know, for all the emphasis on drivability, this thing is offered up with a healthy dose of safety features, both new and old. The available head-up display is now in full color. It can show you things like how fast you're driving, what the local speed limit is, the direction of travel, you name it. It's also available with a whole bunch of features like autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, radar cruise control with traffic sign recognition, lane keep assist. It's a pretty well-rounded suite of safety features. Now that lane keep assist system shouldn't be confused with the semi-autonomous types that are growing in popularity. Yes, it will keep you from crossing one line, but it will pinball you across the next one and it needs the driver to react as quickly as possible. It will also deactivate if the driver doesn't react to a line marking that's been crossed. As far as things that haven't changed about the Mazda 3 go, it rides on the same 106.3 inch wheelbase, which is on par with cars like the Honda Civic. But at 175 inches from bumper to bumper, it is shorter than many of its competitors. It also trails its competitors when it comes to cargo room, with only 20.2 cubic feet of space behind the rear seats, which is well behind the likes of the Honda Civic or even the Chevy Cruze hatchback. It also sacrifices some rear passenger space to its competitors with less than 36 inches of leg room in the second row. With 37 and a half inches of headroom front and back, it's on par with its competitors, but only on paper. Get in the back seat, and it seems like that higher hip point really cuts into headroom for taller passengers. It's not a deal breaker, especially for a young family, but if you plan on transporting more than two people, 
most of the time you may want to have a look at that second row because it could cause problems down the road. So the Mazda 3 is a little short on space, but it's definitely still fun to drive, something the addition of G-vectoring control only enhances. It also drives a hard bargain, with hatchback models starting at about 19 grand. You know, it's only a matter of time before a crossover like the CX-5 replaces the Mazda 3 as the brand's breadwinner, but as these changes for 2017 prove, this compact isn't going down without a fight. Pfft, tuck it and bucket!